hello there welcome back to the channel hope you're safe and well in this video we're going to be zeroing an air rifle So we've got all the preparatory work out of the way, the definitions and the explanations and what you need and what's nice to have. But hooray! We're finally going to do some shooting. So I'm here out on my garden range and um, today I'm going to be using my Air Arms S400 uh, with a Hawk Vantage scope and we're going to be shooting Air Arm Diablo Fields 177 8.4 grain pellets. Now this rifle I've been using this for hunting so at the moment it's zeroed for 35 yards. I want to take it out onto the HFT range and I always zero my rifles for HFT for 25 yards which if you've uh, watched the trajectory video you'll understand the reason why. If you haven't seen that then go and have a look and um, things just make a bit of sense. So, what we're going to do then is uh, I'm going to explain how the best way that I've found um, through other people's advice and watching other videos and stuff for zero and a rifle. What we're going to be using is a paper target with a simple cross marked on it because um, I do my zeroing in two stages. First, I set the windage and then I set the elevation and then I combine the two to see how well the rifle is going to group. Now one of the things is when you've just set your gun up with a new scope or you've got some uh, a rifle that's been set up by somebody else and you know you've no idea you know where it's zeroed to or how it's zeroed. When you shoot on the range you're not really going to have much of an idea of where the pellets are going to strike. So the safest thing to do to begin with is to minimise your range as much as possible because that limits where the pellets are going to actually go. If you go straight out to your chosen zero range and you start shooting at a target and the pellets are not hitting the target, you've got no idea where they are going, you don't know what adjustments to make. There's also a second reason why um, you want to limit your range to begin with. Unless you've got uh, access to an indoor range, like me if you're shooting outside, your pellets are always going to be affected one way or another by the wind. So you can minimise the wind to begin with by setting your windage at a short range. So what we're going to do is I'm set up at about 10 yards from the pellet, uh, pellet catcher. And uh, what I'll be doing first off is we'll be adjusting our side focus down to minimum focus range which is around 10 yards and I'll be reducing the magnification on the rifle down to the minimum as well. That means that we're going to get the best view of our target at short range. So what I'm going to do now then is go and pop the target in the target holder and we'll get going. Right so Initially what I'm going to be doing is putting two shots on the target to see where they land. Now, as this um, rifle has already been zeroed, even though it's 35 yards, I wouldn't expect the, uh, don't expect that the windage is going to be out that much. Uh, but we'll see. Now what I'm going to be doing is, the only thing that I'm going to be worrying about on the target is the vertical line that I've drawn. So I'll be lining the uh, reticle, the vertical part of the reticle in the scope perfectly with the vertical line on the target and shooting that to see where the pellets land. one 
right well you can see that um, those pellets they're about they're both touching both level and they're approximately an eighth to a quarter of an inch off to the left of the line so what we're going to be doing then is I'm going to look on my turret and see that I need to turn clockwise to go left and anti-clockwise to go right. I want to move the pellets across to the right so I'm initially going to click four clicks. Two, three, four clicks and we'll see where, put another couple of pellets on and we'll see where they go. One, that's two, and you can see that uh, we're still just slightly to the left of that line. So I'm going to give give it another two clicks. Uh, so. Just checking again, we want to go counterclockwise to move it to the right. So one, two clicks, and we'll try it again. We'll move down to the bottom of the line now. Just one. That's uh, near enough through the same hole. We're still slightly just off of that line, so I think I'll just give it one more click just to move it along. So again, counterclockwise, one click. Try one more pellet. Move up to the top of the line where we haven't shot before. There we are, smack bang on the line. So at this range we're good for um, good for windage. Now one thing to remember is that um, any slight variances in accuracy at close range, if you extend the range, then they're going to be amplified because we're firing in a uh, pellets in sort of a cone. So the further we go out, any disparity between the line and that pellet is going to be amplified at 25 yards when we uh, at a further distance. So when we go to 25 yards, we might find that we are slightly off to the side of the line again and we might need to make a further adjustment. But for now, um, that's good enough to begin with. So that's the windage out of the way. We'll put the uh, cap back on, on our turret for now and um, we need to move back to 25 yards, which is our zero range, and then we're going to start concentrating on the shooting at the horizontal line. Okay, a bit of a drama. I've had to replace the target. Moved the uh, shooting table back 25 yards and started recording the, uh, the second segment of um, setting up the elevation. And an aeroplane decided to do aerobatics above, and it was a very noisy aeroplane. So I had to call that a, uh, a wrap with that one and uh, wait for everything to die down and uh, so we're back out again. Who knew it was going to be that difficult to make videos in a garden? <laughs> so what are we doing? Right, we're back at 25 yards. Uh, I didn't mention on the first video the reason that I'm using the shooting table is because this is the first time I'm shooting a uh, video in out in the garden and as I've just mentioned a bit more difficult than I expected uh, but I thought it'd be easier using a table to set the uh, cameras up than to lie prone but um, 
at some time in the future we're going to have to do some prime videos because it's HFT. So, um, so anyway, as I say, we're set at 25 yards, which is a zero range now. About two thirds down the range, I've got a, um, a streamer so I can see what's happening with the wind because the wind's picked up a little bit, um, or so say wind, breeze, it's gentle breeze really. It's picked up a little bit so compared to uh, when we were videoing earlier on. Uh, but looking at that, it's not much of a breeze and when it is blowing, it's blowing straight down the range over my shoulder. So it shouldn't be a problem, we'll have to see. So what I'm gonna do then, is uh, as I said before, ignore the uh, the vertical line. We're shooting purely at the horizontal line on the target, aligning as closely as possible with the horizontal line on the reticle. Uh, I've set my focus up and I've gone back to 10 times magnification, which is the normal magnification that I shoot at. And we'll talk about that in another video: magnification and parallax and stuff. So. Uh, but for now, let's put a couple of shots down the range and see where they hit on the target uh, and then see what adjustments we need to make, make if any. That's one. And as expected, it has gone above the line. And that second shot's gone next to it, and uh, we're about 0.9 of a mil dot for 25 yards. So what I'm going to do is, I'm thinking, I'm going to try 10 clicks. Now looking on this, uh, anti-clockwise is up, so clockwise is down, so we're going to go down 10 clicks. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we'll put another pellet down there and see whereabouts what uh, what the change that's made. And just as I say that, we get a jet from Mildon Hall that's going to fly over. can't win we'll have to make do so where did that pellet go that pellet looks like it's just below and touching the line so what I'm gonna do is let's put another pellet down to see how it compares to the first one move along the line a little bit so that they're not on top of each other Yeah, that one's a little bit higher. What I'm going to do is take it up one click and just see whether that moves above the line. And if it does, we'll take that click off. Line up again. Well, that's just below the line again. So let's give it another click up. Now, this is a, um, an MOA turret. So if you've seen my video on scope turrets, the difference between MOA and MRAD, you'll know at 25 yards, um, the nearest that I'm going to get to the centre of the line is 1 16th of an inch. Might not be possible to get smack bang in the middle of the line. Uh, but we need to see if we're going to jump above it so we can decide whether we want to be below or above it if we can't get exactly in the middle. So I'm going to go to the other side of the target now, to the right hand side of the, of the vertical line. Yeah, that's gone above. So we're going to take that click off. And we'll 
try again. Hopefully we'll be back where we were before. Yeah, and funnily enough, that's smack bang on the line, that one. So I think that will do us for now. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, let me show you. Ooh, let's take this target out. Ooh. Oh, nothing like being prepared, is there? All right, move that back. So what I've got now is, uh, I'm going to check some groupings, do a five shot grouping, see how the gun's grouping with this setup for with this zero. Um, and for that I'd just like to uh, use black dots to aim at, saving me wasting a pellet to make a hole. So I make dots about the size of a pellet um, and use those to group with. So I'll go down and change the target and then we'll carry on. Okay, so uh, I've set the new target up. We'll just get ourselves sorted down here, make sure that we can still see everything. And uh, we'll put some shots on these dots and see see how we get on, see if we have to make any minor adjustments or anything. Right, that's gone, that's level with the dot. But as you can see, it's just gone to the right. And that one's gone, well I won't say through the same hole, but it's near enough. So I think what's happening is, what I mentioned earlier, when we've extended the distance, uh, we've amplified an error in the 10 meter setting, or the 10 yard setting rather. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna put um, two left clicks on the windage, which is clockwise, one, two. And I think we will nearly be there. So let's try that. nearly spot on. Here comes the jet. <laughs> we can't win today if it's not aerobatic planes it's um, air tankers going back into RF Mildenhall. Uh, right. and that's gone off a little bit to the right. What I'm going to do is give this one more click left. Because looking at that streamer, that's hanging dead down at the moment, so it's it's definitely not the wind that's blowing it. Could be me, of course. I have inability to shoot straight, but uh, we'll see. That's it. Right, I'm going to shoot the the dot bottom left now. Spot on. <laughs> should we, should we, should we try another one just to make sure it's not a fluke? Let's have another one just to see, just to make sure. Yeah, that'll do me. That one's gone off to a little bit to the right, but uh, I'm sure if I put if I put some more pellets down there, it'll be a pretty good grouping. That's th 
three. That's four. And one more for the five. Go. Yep. Well, that'll do for now. Of course, we've only got hit 15 mil at um, at 25 yards, so um, pretty certain that that'd do the job. So that's how we go about, or that's how I go about zeroing, and. Um, and that's the end of this video. Hope you found that useful. And uh, if you've got any questions or any comments, please put them in the video below and I'll come back and um, answer. Uh, if you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up uh, because then it, this video will show up on other people's uh, YouTube accounts and um, it makes the uh, makes everybody else aware that this video is actually uh, this uh, channel is actually there. And uh, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe. It's totally free, um, doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps me out because um, it, um, it does make my video more visible to everybody else. So uh, next time, what we're going to be doing next time? Right, okay, now we've zeroed to 25 yards. What we're going to be doing next time is I'm going to show you um, the um, manual method of uh, how to create a range card so that you know all your aim points ready for your uh, first trip to the HFT course. So I'll see you then.